Job did not have the benefit of having a Bible with the book of Job in it. Job was writing the Bible. He was actually writing the book himself. And it's very important that you understand that because Job didn't have a clue. Uh, it wasn't as though it seemed in his life. To Job, he didn't know what was going on. He was in the trial of his life. He had boils upon his back. All of his children were taken from the earth in a day. And Job is in a crisis. All Job can talk about is death, the grave, it's over. But little did Job know that like a tree, his life would bud again. Not only would it bud, but it would shoot forth and the branches would expand and there would be life after even the death of his own family that he would live again, but he couldn't see it. I guess in the most simplest term, you could say that it wasn't as though it appeared to Job. It really wasn't the way it was. It's the way Job thought it was. Job, in chapter 14, and beginning with verse 1, he says, Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and then full of trouble. All he had to do to have trouble was be born. The minute that he was born, there would be trouble. Not weeks, not months, but days. He said would be full of trouble. And he cometh forth like a flower. All of a sudden, he, he begins to blossom. And life becomes fruitful, and then he's cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow, and continueth not. It's over. And dost thou open thine eyes upon such a one, and bringest me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No, not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. You've got him in a situation that he can't get out of. Turn from him that he may rest. Lord, would you please leave him alone? And he will, shall accomplish as an hireling his day. Now notice this, for there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth, forth bows like a plant. But man dieth and wasteth away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? He said, even a tree, if it's cut down, falls on the ground, and the root waxes old, through the scent of water, a sprout can come forth. Now what was amazing to me is Job didn't realize that he wasn't dying. All he could feel is death. But it wasn't as though it appeared to Job. Notice this famous verse that preachers have preached every man that's ever got in a pulpit. 
Because as he continues, he says, So man lieth down and riseth not till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. The finality of death. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave. Just put me in the grave. That thou wouldest keep me secret until the wrath be passed. That thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Little did Job know he wasn't going to the grave. He felt as though he had already died. He felt as though he had already been cast down. But he is literally prophesying to his own future and don't even know it. Because Job wasn't a dying man. He was a living tree. He was a tree that God said, I want you to look at the stability of this man. I want you to look at the strength. Satan, have you considered my servant Job that there is no man like him anywhere in the earth? Now, Sister Shields... You and I talk to the same God, but we haven't talked to, the, to one another today. But God gave us the same message today I preach to you on the scent of water. The scent of water. Would you lift your hands and would you ask God to move in this building right now? Thank you, Lord, for life and peace and power and provision. Thank you for lifting us. Thank you for a supernatural anointing in this place. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for everything that you have done. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you have given to us. I thank you, Lord, for every blessing that you have given to this church. I thank you for every prophecy. And I pray, Lord, that you would help me to preach what you have given to the shepherd today. That those that are weary, that those that are facing adversity, that those that are in the trial of their life, that they will understand this is the year of healing waters. This is the year that the river of your healing will flow. This is the year of getting victory over things that have conquered us and that have kept us hostage and in prison. We celebrate what you're about to do in this house. I thank you, Lord, for every blessing. And I, I thank you today for the witness of the Holy Ghost. Now let the power of the Holy Ghost minister in this building, we pray. Anoint our ears to hear and anoint these lips of clay to speak your word. I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. God bless you and you may be seated. As we have already indicated in the life of Job, Job was in the crisis of his life. I felt like last year that the Lord began to shed some light and some revelation on the life of Job. I compared it to my own self who was raised in a dysfunctional environment. Uh, naturally, what, what uh, sociologists and psychologists would say, uh, having been raised in the era of the do-nothings or the slackers or Generation X, who placed a label upon uh, that society that said they will never amount to anything I was one born in that time frame from 60 to 80 where uh, children were not as as uh, celebrated as they were now. Uh, that would be the time period that Roe versus Wade was passed. It was no children's menus. There was, there was uh, uh, apartment complexes that were adult only. And only in years to pass did that become illegal. 
uh, Gary Sustiak in his book Next Generation indicated that this was the most unwanted generation of all civilization. Uh, they came up in that era. So poor self-image and low self-esteem became the order of the day. And I realized as I began to study last year the book of Job, God showed me that the word literally inferiority uh, or inferior was in the text of Job. And it was as his three friends, who had become actually his enemies, uh, began to put him under question as though... Anybody going through what you're going through must have sin in their life. Finally, Job would, would take their railing accusations so much until one time he said, uh, I am not inferior to you. Something inside of him, God uh, would look at that and, and, and say, there's nothing wrong with you standing up for yourself, Job. Because Job never, when you find out at the end of the chapter, he never cursed God, he never charged God foolishly. And uh, the, the Bible said to those three men, God was talking to them that you didn't act right like and, and speak right like my servant Job. And there was another time that, that Job became infuriated with their questioning and he said, I am not inferior to you. I want you to understand that I, I am a man like you are, but, but you can't keep railing upon me. He stood his ground. Mark 13 verses from the second time he said that, and he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. It doesn't matter, though I do not have understanding of what I'm going through. I don't know how I got here. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what is going on in my life. I have been perplexed. I am confused. I have been hit on every side. I am physically a mess. I am mentally a mess. I am emotionally a mess. But I am not inferior to you. How could he say that? How could he look at his wife and say, you speak as a foolish woman. Curse God and die. What are you thinking? I can't curse God. Because even though Job was a man in crisis, he still was absolutely convinced that my only hope is in God himself. No adversity, no difficulty, no pain, no misunderstanding, no false accusation, nothing that his friends could even give him. It was not in him. Now many of us who have wrestled with inferiority and, and poor self-image, if somebody speaks against our character, then we put our head down. We put our shoulders begin to, to stoop and suddenly we have no confidence. I've seen people that could be talked out of a walk with God uh, because they got offended. I, I, I see people that have been talked down to and, 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 and their whole world comes caving in. But Job's word wasn't dependent upon even his relationship with his wife. His relationship was not dependent on what his friends said about him. Can I tell you today, thank God for friends. Thank God for friends. But sometimes friends can appear to be enemies by their voices and by their words. But he said, I, my faith in God, it may not be in my wife's statement. I may not be able to build faith in my friend's statement. But even though nobody understands, I can go to God and he knows right where I am at and though he slay me I will trust him I can't find him on the left and I can't find him on the right I back up and I can't find him I go forward and I can't find him but he knows the way that I take God knows everything that I'm going through I have come to preach to saints that have been the greatest saints. You have had more faith or as much faith as Job. You're in the crisis of your life. You didn't deserve to be there. You don't know how you got there. You don't know why you're going through. But I've got to tell you, you're not going to die in this dilemma because you've got the same faith in God that Job had. And Job had a faith that could not be shattered 
a faith that could not be taken away by the difficulty of other people, by the statements of other people. He knew that God exists no matter what I'm going through. God is still alive. He knows my address. He knows what I'm going through. Jehovah knows where I live. My hope is in him. My trust is in him. My my mind is going to stay on him. I'm bowed down, but I'm not through. I'm broken, but I'm not finished. I, I'm, I'm hurting, but I, I, my faith is still intact. I, I, I don't know how I'm going to get through this, but I'm going to make a declaration. And then Job begins to just say, man, man doesn't have any hope. When he dies, it's over. Water can't make him live again. It's over. No light can revive him. But he said, a tree, there's hope of a tree. Because if a tree is cut down and the roots are still in the ground, if a little rain or a little moisture gets to it, then suddenly something begins to bud. Something breaks through the ground. Little did he know he was speaking truth In a prophetic realm, he was opening up something that would literally happen to mankind. Because though one day society would be dead in trespasses and sin, if they could get in the presence of his majesty and the water of life could flow from the throne room of God's grace, something would bud, something would live again, something could sprout again, something could literally be born again. Oh my. God is in this place today. Because like Job, some of you have had a whirlwind of unexpected situations. But I've got to tell you, God's still in control. He is still as powerful as he's already been. You might be set back, but your setback is a setup to take you to a higher dimension. God is going to honor your faithfulness. Would somebody help me preach? I need a little help in here this morning. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Job you're becoming preaching material Job keep standing Job keep pressing Job keep pushing because somebody's going to be preaching about you. Somebody's going to be saying my dad went through the storm but he stayed faithful and God turned it around. God made him fruitful the situation looked like it was dead. It looked like it was finished. It looked like a tree had been broken down but the roots of my father's faithfulness the roots of my father's benevolence the roots of my father's patience the roots of my mother's patience begin to spring up my children and my grandchildren are the recipients of a man and a woman who went through trials that they didn't understand but when it was all over God brought them through they begin to bud again they begin to bloom again They begin to block. I wish somebody could hear the voice of the Lord. You're going to bloom again. It's going to sprout again. You're going to live again. God's going to bring fruitfulness back to your home again. If you believe it, stand to your feet, shout unto the Lord. And thank him for what's coming down your dusty road. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's amazing. Notice. Notice the word is sent. Not S-E-N-T. The word is S-C-E-N-T. All that root has to do is smell it. All that root has to do is say water. It's not this flood of water, but the roots start stretching toward what it senses. The roots start pushing toward what it's sensing. The Lord just came into this place and some of you have been in the storm of your life, but the minute he walked in this morning, your roots have started moving to 
toward the water of life. You have been moving toward the spirit of almighty God. I'm stretching to out of myself. My hope comes from the Lord. My help comes from God. Why do we tell people to raise their hands? But you don't have to tell some people. Some people know I've been in my home before and just been walking, minding my own business, and suddenly... I sense the presence of Almighty God. I don't mean literally smell it, but I know He's there. I am in the presence of another world. Jesus just came into this. Does anybody know what I'm preaching? You have to say, stop. Stop, honey. Be still, children. I feel the presence of the Lord. It's happened around dinner tables where we didn't know how we were going to get the next meal. It's where we didn't know how we were going to pay the bills. And then suddenly the presence of God come in in the spirit of hope. And suddenly we start reaching and scenting the very presence and the power of God. And the husband says, honey, get your head up. God's going to help us. We're going to get through this. God is faithful. God is powerful. Or the wife says, I don't know how. I don't know when. But I know God is going to take care of us. Would you stand to your feet, clap your hands, and start scenting. Scenting. Because if you can inhale the hope of his majesty and the help of his majesty and the power of his ability, if you can just inhale it, if you can just take a deep breath, see what happens to people. You may be seated when they get in crisis is they stop breathing. When people are overcome with anxiety, it's... <gasps> when people get mad and they're fussing with their wife or their husband, <gasps> breathe, honey, quickly so you can get oxygen to your brain. <laughs> breathe. Breathe quickly. Because when you're not breathing, you're not thinking. And Job was holding his breath. And he was saying, I'm finished. I'm over. And he said, a tree has more hope than I do. Just put me in the graveyard. And God probably wanted to say... I am using you for sermon material because you're so awesome. Would you just be quiet a minute and hang on? Because the end's going to be much better than you ever dreamed. I am using you to literally be a sermon that a preacher will be preaching on a Sunday who people are in the same condition. They're not, they, they've not lost children, but they've lost jobs. They're about to lose homes. They've lost faith. They've lost confidence. And they feel like their life is over. But it's not over. I am going to step up. I am going to come in their midst. I'm going to hold their hand. I'm going to give them everything they need. And they're going to blossom again. And they're going to stretch again. And they're going to live again. That's why as we move into the legacy campaign, it's not equal giving. Because some people can't give on the same level. But it's equal sacrifice. It's people that are saying, Lord, I'm not able to give at that level. You may be repositioned. You may be like Job. And all you get to give to this campaign is your faith and your prayer. But I want to tell you, like Job... You're going to get, your faith is going to give a future to your children and to your grandchildren. We're all coming together in the spirit of unity. And I'm believing that impossible situations of 2015 are going to be restored through the healing waters and flow that has already been prophesied and determined that God is going to do. And it's been evident of every step that God is going to do it. 
every word, every sermon. Can you imagine? I don't talk to evangelists. Damaged, but not destroyed. I mean, give me a break. Defining moments. God's not got uh, giving some, some message that's foreign, that it's over here and it's over here. God is saying very uniformly, I'm going to put you back together again. I'm going to make you everything you ever dreamed about. The future is going to be greater than your past. How could it be? Just watch God. Just inhale. Just believe. Just have faith. Well, put me in the grave. No, God's not going to put you in the grave. He wants you to keep living. Because as you keep walking, even though you don't know where you're going, and you're walking toward Him, He's going to give you a future that is bigger than you can ever imagine. Now, can I just very quickly move to the back of, of the book and share with you something that is absolutely amazing. When you look at the conclusion of Job's life, and that's where vision is supposed to start, is you begin with the end in mind. Now, Job didn't have the privilege of knowing what the end was, but we have the privilege of knowing what his end was. And here's what the Bible said. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a 1,000 yoke of oxen, and a 1,000 she-asses, and had also seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first, Jemima, and the name of the second, Kezii, and the name of the third, Karen Hapuk. Now notice, notice, they're just names, right? But one means warm or dove. The other is cinnamon or spice. One has to do with the element of silver, meaning that I'm going to give strength and vitality to your future like you've never dreamed. You are going to fly again. You're going to enjoy and have life again. And the Bible said that the offspring, that his daughters were more fair than anybody else in the country. And the greater end was... That latter end was greater than anything that he had ever had. Why? Because Job, you tap into something. You thought you were dying, but you're not. You've just been cast down. But the roots of your faith have penetrated to the throne room of God's grace. And there is about to be a blessing on your offspring. It was the offspring of faith. It was the offspring of God's promise and God's blessing. It was hoping in something he could not see. It was believing in something that he could not hold. Would you help me just for a moment? Take your faith and lift it to the throne room of God's majesty. I know it's been hard. I know it's been difficult. I know you thought you were going to lose it all. But God has said, if you can just smell, if you can just inhale, if you can just If you can just imagine like Job and start hoping and trusting in me, I've got your latter end in the palm of my hand. Get behind them, Satan. I come against every lying spirit. I come against every demonic spirit. I come against every depressing spirit. I come against every spirit that has lied to people. God may reposition you, but you may be going higher than you've ever been before. God has something with your name on it. I was amazed last year when people said, I'm losing my job, only to find out within a few short months that they had a job greater than the one that they lost because God has a way of taking care of faithful people. They went over me and around me, and I didn't get the raise. 
And then suddenly God began to intervene. Can I preach to somebody? Our confidence is in the Lord. It's not in an employer. It's not in a workplace. It's not in society. It's not in economy. It doesn't matter what happens to the economy. God's not broke. He has a a cattle on a thousand hills. God is able to feed you with the ravens if necessary. Somebody ought to get to your feet and start scenting after the water. His seed blossomed again. His seed. My life is over. Not if you're still breathing. My life is gone. Not if you're still alive. Not if you can whisper the name of Jesus. Not if you can sense the presence of his majesty. Not if you can go in the room and know he's there or go into your bedroom and sense that Jesus just came in to visit with you. If you can anticipate and if you can acknowledge that God is with you, no enemy can destroy you. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. Shout all you want to. This is the year of healing. This is the year of getting my job back. This is the year of getting my mind back. This is the year of getting our children back. This is the year. Let the healing waters flow. Let them flow. I'll never be happy again. If your happiness is predicated on what man can do, if your happiness is on the junk of this world, then you'll never be happy again. But if your happiness depends upon Jesus Christ and him holding you and touching you and leading you and guiding you, you're about to have the happiest day of your life. Clap your hands and shout. Come on, church. Sent after the water. Sent after the water. I don't know how I'm going to make it, but I'm reaching out to the water. I don't know how I'm going to get through it. I've been falsely accused. I've been lied upon. I even made the mistake my own self. I blew it. I erred. I know what it is as a teenager to be in your bedroom, a smoke-filled trailer, the only one living for God, sinning and wondering if God was going to kill me. Like Job, I felt as though I was ready for the grave, only to find out that Jesus Christ is not the trigger man trying to take me out. He's the Savior trying to pull me through. And I begin to have a revelation that he's not mad at me. And when his presence would come in the bedroom, I learned to just scent. I would know, as you stand all over this building, I would know, it, oh, it sometimes. I would want to start saying, God, I rebuke every devil. Because I was young and immature, I didn't realize that life had just walked into my bedroom to protect me. I would go to sleep at night. There would be times I would be so fearful that I would take my Bible and go to sleep because I was afraid to even go to sleep at night. Only in the morning. To wake up before I went to school and not one crinkled page on my Bible to see my Bible laying by me. And I learned as I sent and as I move into the direction of His holiness, He comes to me. He gives me life. He gives me peace. He gives me hope. He gives me strength. Would you... Those of you who may be new to Pentecost, 
that don't understand. It's when the presence of his word gets so filled in our mind that we respond to it. It's the scent. It is a response to his holiness and to the fact that we cannot make it. And what God is saying to this church is your offspring is going to be beautiful. You are going to bud. You are going to shoot forth. You're in the trial of your life and you feel like it's over. But you're going to bud. You're going to bloom. You're going to blossom. You're going to flourish. Because your roots go all the way to the throne room of His majesty. Your roots go all the way to His majesty. And I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. I don't know how and I don't know when. And I certainly don't know why. But I know when we begin to scent like the tree and begin to inhale, he said, come and take and drink of the waters of life freely. Come inhale Waters that will not drown you, but waters that will give you life forever. And peace and prosperity in your mind. Just inhale. The presence. Every head bowed, every eye closed. The Lord has come to this building today. To say like the tree, Job, you will blossom again. I know you're, you feel like you're ready to die, but you're not going to die, Job. The men that have put you through such agonizing testing are going to have to build an altar to you and apologize before it's all over. Because they didn't speak right like you did, Job. You, you spoke right through this whole process. But you're not dying, Job. You're actually going to be like the tree. You will blossom, you will bud because your faith has reached the throne room of my majesty. Would you raise your hands right now, those of you who are receiving this word that know it's a word directly for you, young people, if you can scent His presence, if you can inhale His mercy and grace. It's not condemnation and guilt. I want you to inhale. When you come to this altar, you're about to inhale the mercy and the grace of God. You're going to inhale hope. You're going to inhale peace. You're going to inhale the future that you don't deserve. The scent of water. He said, I will wait. That word wait in the original in Hebrew is hope. I'm going to hope until my circumstance is changed. I'm going to hope in your presence until my circumstance changes. And it's going to change, Job. And it won't be long until your circumstance is going to change. I'm going to hope until my circumstance changes. Lord, I want to be what you want me to be. Lord, I want to be a blessing. Lord, I would love to have a miracle right now so that I could be a part of the future. I'll take a miracle. I need a miracle. I want to be in alignment. There's no condemnation. This, this entire first two months of the year have been preached against the condemn, condemning spirit that has come to destroy my people and make them feel as though they are worthless and cheap and I do not love them. Come and speak to them and lift them and preach to them through my word that if they can just inhale in my presence, they will live with great mercy. They will live with great grace. I will touch them as though they never... And as you're coming, don't don't wait on me. Just start scenting after His presence. Don't, Don't wait on me. Lord, your holy presence has moved into the sanctuary today. 
I remember the day that you came in to the car. I remember the day you stepped into the bedroom and I knew this is the Spirit of Almighty God. When I was on the hospital bed and I didn't know where to turn, I didn't know how to move, when I thought it was all over because the doctor had given me a prognosis that I could not handle, I began to scent and hope in the presence of an ability that is greater than mine. When I had no understanding why a man and a family like me who has been faithful are going through something like this right now, all I could do is scent the presence of your faithfulness. All I could do is remember the God who had provided in all of the days before. All I could do is remember the God that had healed my child and my children when they were sick and diseased and afflicted. And as I began to remember, I began to scent. And I felt angels come into the room. I felt the very presence of God begin to move into my circumstance. I'm telling your story. I'm not telling my story. I just told some of your story. I was about to lose my mind. I felt so condemned I was never going to go back in church. I was feeling the weight of my mistake. I thought about ending it all. But I went to church that day and suddenly the presence of God came into the sanctuary and I began to scent that possibly He could forgive me and cleanse me and restore me. Would you just raise your hands? Would you, would you begin to feel after His presence? Would you love Him? Would you praise Him? God is going to use you like you've never dreamed. The anointing that you dreamed about, the ministry, the calling that you feel like is over. You've shut the door and you thought would never come. Just begin to scent. Begin to scent. Begin to scent. Lord, you've been faithful. Lord, you've been holy. Lord, you've been righteous. Lord, you've been true. Take your husband by the hand. Take your friend by the hand. Take take an, uh, somebody that you're close to. Take them by the hand and b- begin to raise that hand in the presence of Almighty God. We're going into the throne room of possibility. We're about to move into the presence of His holiness. We're about to enter into the holy of holies. And we're going to dream again. We're going to love again. We're going to fly again. We're going to blossom again. There's going to be sentiment again. There's going to be strength again. Just feel after His presence. seemeth to be none. I love you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. God's going to use your ministry. God's going to give you a ministry. God's going to restore health to your mind and memory. Sent after the water. Your Majesty, for the Spirit, my hope cometh from the Lord.
your horn with his anointing power. He's going to fill you up. You will bud and blossom and bloom. Oh, yes, you will. You're gonna fall! 